Hello YouTube, here I am again, and it's only taking 22 months, but here's my 50th video. Well, actually I had a, apparently it has a 51st video, but I did have one a while back, which I deleted because it had nothing of my creation, and it was averaging about 3 views a year. So, but anyway, here I am with my very first vlog entry. I see them a lot of people making progress on their creation or any update, and I thought I'd make one of my own. About, well... I'm not really having any projects going on, but just a bunch of things I'd like to show you. And this one apparently is my very first one. The Remarkable Train. And what this is about is a little steam locomotive which I purchased from a hobby shop. This one is by far the cheapest locomotive I've ever seen. Anywhere. Including online. And as well as one in person, obviously. And the looks of this engine is pretty much what got me, but the price did too. I mean, at $4.50, you really can't beat it. And believe it or not, the motor actually works. And the best part is, is that you can't actually find one of these around anymore. But anyway, nothing says good packaging more than wrapped in this paper. So I will get the locomotive out. And anyway, here it is. Are you ready? for the cheapest locomotive I've ever seen. Voila. Isn't it a very pretty attractive locomotive? Yeah, I don't think so either. Get a good look at that. It is 2350. And the railroad is not said. Apparently this engine was built in the 1970s or 1980s, built by a company called Playart. I've never heard of them either. I decided to research them and found out that they make cheap toy trains. And by the looks of this, you can see it's very, very cheap. Definitely worth the price. In fact, this engine does not even look American, it looks European. And nothing says European more than having a horn hook coupler. And it's. It, and this engine is so cheap. It wasn't even made in China, it was actually made in. Hong Kong. Well, actually, that's a part of China. But anyway, it's... It is a very interesting looking locomotive. In fact, the design... I don't even know what the prototype of this is. I don't even know what country this is. It's probably European, but... I do like the fact that this thing has a rear door, as you can see. And apparently, on a tank engine, I don't know where you don't know the rear door, because then... You'd probably have the engineer or fireman decide to open the door, climb out, only to have their head smashed by a hold hook coupler. Interesting, isn't it? It is very, um, not very smooth. It's not very realistic at all. In fact, it's, you're wondering why you ever bought this engine to begin with. Besides, it has nothing relative with any of the other engines I have, except for the fact that it is able to run on the track I have. Oh, you just wondered what. I'm still wondering what railroad this is a part of. It could just be an imagination railroad, number 2350 of the blank railroad. Since I called my railroad South Haven, that's exactly what it's going to be called. South Haven, number 2350. Now, the only thing is, is that it's so old, it states back to the 70s, and back then, people were creative with model trains. Because I'm getting the fact that this engine is, I don't know if you can tell, but it is rather large. And what I mean by that is, it's very tall. You can't really tell right now, but it's taller than most of the locomotives I have. Either for two reasons. One, it could be double O scale. Or two, it's just oversized for no reason. Or three, well... Actually, a third option would probably be it's also a narrow gauge, like ON30, because, well, I can't really explain why they made an engine so big. But anyway, here's a more briefly detailed description of what I mean by these three options. Okay, got some things cleared up, and now let me give you an idea of what double O scale is. HO scale is obviously 187, 
and double O scale is 176. So obviously, double O scale is bigger. But for some reason or another, they apparently still fit on HO gauge track, even though the locomotives are taller and bigger in proportion. Makes no sense, however, but uh, double O scale is more popular in Europe, and you'll see a lot of them over there. But during the 1970s, the company River Rossi sort of messed around with the idea of having double O scale locomotives up for sale here. Makes no sense, but let me give you an idea of what that's like. Let me push this engine aside to give you an example. This is an HO scale 284. The wheels fairly small. And in real life, the locomotive had 69 inch drive wheels. So, this is what 69 inch drive wheels look like in HO scale. Let's get an engine with bigger wheels now. This engine obviously has bigger drive wheels. That is what 80 inch drive wheels look like in HO scale. And obviously they were a lot bigger than these. Both of these engines have the right size wheels and they're both HO scale. Now let's move on to this. Oops. The Casey Jones engine apparently. Only supposed to be Casey Jones. It's not like this engine was painted for any other road name made by River Rossi. This engine was made in the 70s and during that time they weren't really too big on accuracy for the low price buyer but anyway if you notice the wheels are pretty close to this size and the real life Casey Jones engine had 69 inch drive wheels now I'm no double O scale expert or anything but 69 inch drive wheels should look like this in HO scale these are a lot smaller than these things. They look closer to size to those wheels. It, it just makes no sense. And if you also notice, the cab is as tall as the Atlantic back here. The Atlantic was obviously a lot bigger locomotive than the real life Casey Jones engine. In fact, the Casey Jones engine should be more to this size because that's obviously what an 1890s locomotive looked like as opposed to this where it sits too high, the wheels are too big, the cab's too big and with all those you know, things I just said that's pretty much the characteristics of a double O scale locomotive if you try to put it up with an H, if you put it as an HO scale locomotive it's too big but it still fits on HO gauge track do you still have the idea of what an HO engine is compared to a double O scale locomotive. This gives you a brief explanation. Now, let's go back to my 040. Obviously, the Casey Jones engine is clearly too big to be an HO scale locomotive, and I've clear clearly proved that with some of my locomotives right here. But the funny thing is, should you put this engine up against my 040, Here's an idea. Still too big. It's, 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 ju it's just so funny how this engine is just so big. How so tall it is. It, it makes no sense. So, a double O scale locomotive, a double O gauge locomotive, double O scale, compared to this oversized monstrous tiny 040 beast. It could be double O scale, I'm not sure though. Because apparently all the packaging of all these old locomotives, they all say HO scale, but I'm not entirely, well, believable of that. Another possible explanation is that this engine could be ON30. What I mean by that is, it's a narrow gauge version of an O-scale engine. Well, actually, that's kind of badly worded, but 
O scale obviously is 148, but we have O and 30, M stands for narrow gauge, and 30 stands for the length of the track, which is 30 inch gauge. O and 30 actually runs on HO scale track, but obviously the ties of the track are much bigger, and everything is more proportional to a much larger size than an HO scale locomotive. This has the characteristics of not only a double O scale locomotive, but an O and 30 locomotive, where the engine is very tall, it's very big, and it would look perfectly fine on a narrow gauge setting because it's just too big to be an HO scale locomotive. And that is pretty much my explanation for this cheap little thing. $4.50 goes a long way for figuring out what this locomotive is. We have no idea what railroad it is. I have no idea what country it's supposed to represent. And I don't even know the proper scale for it. So, how does it run is the question. Well, let me show you that. Aha! Now you get to see this locomotive run. Let me give you an idea of what the locomotive is like. It's cheap. So, in other words, it's not going to be quiet. It's not going to be smooth, it's going to be terrible at slow speeds, and it can run at 68 miles an hour. I won't recommend going at full speed because the engine goes so fast the wheels actually jump off the track every now and then. The engine is very shaky. Let me give an example of what that is like. Aha. Look at that. This thing is going at less than 30% throttle and it's already shaking. Oh yes. Let's, let's bump it up to 100%. See? Let's go all the way. It's pretty loud, isn't it? Look at that. Sparks fly, this thing jumps, it's very shaky. That's four dollars and fifty cents for you. Ooh, it actually does light up, the headlight. Now let's give an idea of what it's like in reverse. The funny thing is, it sounds like this. Oh yes. That's the sound of a cheap motor for you. And if you listen closely, it actually sounds like it does chug. So, for you people who can't really afford the whole DCC with sound thing, this engine sounds like it's chugging. doesn't sound bad for the synchronizing of the wheels turning like that, so it's kind of funny. Let's get it around at full speed, and here's what it sounds like going back. Oh, look at that. But anyway, there we go. My first vlog has to do with uh, this thing. It's cheap, it's foreign made, it's foreign looked, it's unknown what it's where it's from, as in railroad. It's, I don't even know what scale it is, but there you go, 
$4.50 will buy you all those questions and more. Please see details for, well, hmm, I don't know, maybe it's, it might be here at a good home. I'm not going to treat this engine like crap. It's a very unique engine, it's 30 years old. It's unlike any other thing, I'm not really going to go into 00 scale or 0130. Just plain old HO and this thing. Anyway, that'll be it for my first vlog entry. Have a great rest of the day, and sorry if I wasted your time.